Okay, so this is my Apex. It's when I want to fly a GoPro, this is what I use. Um, it's been with me now for about a year, and uh, I've banged this thing into the ground a lot of times. Um, I've only been flying for two years, so it's been with me for half of that. Um, and it, it keeps coming back for more. I think I'm on the second or third set of motors. Um, but as far as structural carbon fibre problems, it's, it's taken everything I can give it. So um, although it's a heavy build at, um, I think it's a bit over 800 grams. I don't know if the camera picks that up or not, but it says 801 grams and I am missing a propeller. So let's add another five and we'll call it about 810, I guess. Um, I try and run it on light batteries, that's only a 1050 6S um, to keep the weight down. Um, recently I flew my other quadcopter, it's an old iFlight thing I built that's flown like shit since day one. But I built it with a, 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 a to run a run cam orange on it. And I flew that the other day and I'm just having a ball with these quads that are like 150 grams lighter. So. Um, GoPro 10, it's heavy as fuck, and I just don't know what I can really do about it. So, um, anyway, this one serves me when I want to have fun. It's getting old, it's getting a little bit banged around, and at the moment, I don't have a backup for it. So, uh, I'm going to attempt to make a build video, and um, I'll show you the way I do it, which is just what I've developed myself over. I don't know, I've built about 20 quads with varying degrees of success, I guess. Um, but by now I sort of have a pattern for what works for me and I'll share that with you guys. So um, that's that out of the way. Uh, parts I'm going to use, um, I'm going to go for an F7 55 amp T-motor flight controller uh, and ESC combo. So that'll be that. Motors I'm going to go some 2207.5s um, and they're a 2100 kV. I'm going a Foxy Falca 3 Mini um, for that. Doing a TBS Unified Pro 32 for the VTX um, receiver. Crossfire Nano RX Pro. Uh, never noticed a Pro before, that's interesting. Uh, requires 6.14 later. Fuck you, TBS. I'm running 6.13. That means to get this go, I've got to convert all my quads over. Uh, again, fuck you, TBS. That's a pain in the ass. Uh, I'll put a GPS on it, as I did with this guy here, because if I fly more than 15 metres from my head, I get lost, and when I'm in unfamiliar places, that helps me, so while I guess it adds a little bit of extra weight with that and the cute little orange man I ordered, um, I think it does have a, yeah. I might cue that up and see how it goes. Uh, so those two together with a bag is 15 grams, so... Um, it's not an insignificant amount of weight, I guess, but uh, I'm throwing that on board. Uh, I'm going to use some race wire because, as I said, I have a habit of fucking up motors and I just find it easier to change them when they're on there. I've got a, a local print for the GoPro 10 and the, um, the antenna for the Crossfire. I've got a stubby little antenna which I'll probably use uh, just for the moment. Um, I'll see how it goes anyway when it's on there. If, if not, I'll get something a little bit more significant. Uh, frame Apex 5 inch got a buzzer and um, I'm going to use these nuts so I'll do maybe an unboxing of the critical stuff and a quick run through as I get to it and um, hopefully this will help somebody and, uh, and I'll enjoy the making process cheers guys ok first thing when Building a quad that I usually like to do is have a bit of a clean up and um, I like to start off with a clean slate. I've given that a little bit of a, a brush over uh, and the reason I do that is I've had quads in the past that have mysteriously failed and I've often wondered whether it's a result of the filthy workplace that I keep. So you know little bits of wire and little bits of solder, who knows where they end up when you're working on something else and you plug it in and all of a sudden you've shortened something somewhere and to eliminate all that and to take away any risk, I just try now and keep things clean. So, um, as I said, I've given a little brush over. I'll do my best as I go to keep little bits of wire and solder and crap cleaned up. Uh, so it's not laying around and it's not getting pulled into magnets and, you know, you know how it goes, all that sort of crap. Um, so, normally what I would do is I would start by binding 
my receiver and checking that that works. And that's simply because I've got into a few builds and found out that I've had problems with receivers. Uh, that's only happened in probably the last year. Um, so maybe the last half a dozen quads. I just seem to have a nightmare with crossfire receivers of late. I don't know why. And these fuck stains now have gone to 6.14 and my whole fleet of 20 quads is on 6.13. So I know now to test this I've got to go through the bullshit of updating my radio and then convert each one over one by one. So rather than do that and rather than stick by the good habits that I have tried to introduce which is testing the crossfire uh, receiver first and binding to it first before I connect it to anything or even get started I'm going to skip that for the moment and um, when I'm up to doing my radio we'll worry about that guy later um, so the other thing I'd like to, to have a look at first is the flight controller um, there's been at least once I've, um, I've built something and plugged it all in and it was just dead so at the very least I'd like to, to try and plug them in and have a look and see what's going on beforehand okay so again this is a it's a, I don't know where the camera's going to focus on that there. It's a, an F7, 55 amp, call it a Pro 2, I don't know why, I don't know what sort of bullshit that is. You get the typical stickers from TBS, uh, sorry, from T-Motor, which just end up getting thrown away. Uh, oh, more fucking stickers, okay. Uh, so this is a 30mm mounting. Uh, I did have another flight controller on ESC there that was rated at 65 amp. And I thought with these 2207 and a half, so I thought maybe I should use the extra just to build in a little bit of buffer. Uh, but it was 10mm mounting. I can't remember why I bought 10mm. So I decided against it, and uh, we'll just stick with the 30mm mounting on this build. And that looks like a flight controller. And I'll have a bit of a closer look at that later. Well, there's bullshit. We've got stuff everywhere. Right out. Oh, there's a passive stuck down there. Nice packaging, T Motor. <laughs> Try returning this after you've opened it. Oh, some stack screws, that's nice. Um, it'll probably be long enough too. Some bullshit packaging. Lead, thank you. What do we got? We got a capacitor here. Thirty-five volts, four seventy. Um, okay, I've probably got something bigger. We'll use something bigger. And the usual spongy shit and spaces. And oh, look at that! We've got some. Um, Okay, we've got some race wire there. I did have some race wire with LEDs and I was contemplating on not using it, so I'll make a decision as time goes on whether I'll use that race wire or I'll use my LED race wire. And you've got a couple of cables here. So I'll get these guys plugged together and I'm going to give it some power to make sure it's alive. And then I'm going to plug it into my computer and just check that it's all there. And, um, and I'll be back soon. Okay, here we are back to... Uh, Flight controller and the ESC. I haven't, uh, I haven't given this power yet, keeping it all real. Um, one thing I did notice, I decided to print out some information on the flight controller and the ESC. I've used both of these before, but it was a while ago, you know, it was a year ago, whatever. Um, so I printed out some information on the, the electronics so I could figure out how to wire it all. And I've come across something that's quite confusing. Now, on the front of this flight controller, there is both a, a VTX and camera outputs. And there is a, a bridged jumper there, where if you bridge one side, you're going to get battery, and if you bridge the other side, you're going to get 5 volts. Um, that seems straightforward enough. When you look at the instructions, or the, the schematics for the flight controller, it has a note that says no voltage output if jumper connection. So um, I might pop that on the screen. Again, it's notes, 
no voltage output if jumper connection. You know, I've tried to work that out a few times, and I guess they're saying that if you choose not to bridge anything, nothing's going to come out. Um, but it seems a little bit vague to me, so I think what I might do at the same time is um, is give the flight controller and the EEC some juice, check that they're both working. Uh, I've got my trusty micrometer here. I might um, I might go and measure what's coming out of these these front power ports for the camera and the VTX and. Well, if I've got to bridge it, so be it. I just don't remember doing it last time. So maybe by default, 5 volts comes out. In which case, I know that'll suit my camera because it's got an operating range of 4.6 to 20 volts. I know it's not good for VBAT. And the, um, the VTX, I can't remember. I have to check. I'd be surprised if that runs on 5 volts. That might be asking a little bit more. Uh, so I'll check that. And, um, and maybe I'll have to run the VTX on VBAT. Anyway, first thing, I'll give it some power and, um, and check check we've got voltage or haven't got voltage out of those, uh, those two ports. So, there we go. Um, now again, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a vlogger dude. I haven't got a whole bunch of cameras and shit. Um, so you're not going to be able to get in there and see what I'm doing. And I think the main thing is um, not to see what I'm doing and copy, but maybe to understand the reason why I'm doing it, just because it's ambiguous. And I don't feel like fucking messing with $250 worth of electronics by connecting up something wrong. So I'm, I'm just going to check it at the start. And I know moving forward that, you know, if, if anything comes up, I've checked myself along the way. So um, this is pit rigged up to my power supply. I'm going to turn that off. So again, I'm going to give it 24 volts, which is, I don't know, 6S. Just going to turn that guy off. Going to plug some power up here to the positive. Plug some power up here to the negative. Okay. And, um, positive, yeah. See what happens. Right, here we go. Okay, so I don't know whether the camera's catching that or not. We've got a, a light on the VTX, that's a good sign. Oh, sorry, on the uh, ESC. Uh, flight controller's got a steady red and a flashing blue. So uh, I'm just going to very gently, actually I might turn the power off for a moment. Very gently turn that around. Uh, nothing shorted out. Get some more power again. Uh, good, we're still right. And I'm just going to see what's coming out the, the front of these guys. Uh, so we've got a negative there. Oh, my little magnifying glass, old eyes. Negative there, positive there. And I see nothing coming out of there. I'm going to assume on the other side it's the same. Uh, positive, negative, it's not going to matter. It's not going to matter for the multimeter. Uh, nothing coming out there. Um, I can't see where this flight controller has a, a VBAT pad just to, to confirm a reading. I'm just having a look now to see whether there is something there. Um, okay, maybe we just check the buzzer pad. So I'm going to turn the power off again. I just don't want to rotate it and have these wires all cross up and shit gets nasty when it doesn't have to. Right, so that just makes it a little bit more convenient for me. I've got no shorts here. Power again. So I'm just checking the, the buzzer. The buzzer's got a, a 5 volt output there, so it'll at least tell me that power's running through it, my multimeter's working and everything else. So here we go. Uh, very careful not to cross the streams. And yeah, there we go. 5.2 volts on the multimeter. So power's flowing. It's coming out of where it should. Uh, but... As per those really clear instructions, I do have to bridge uh, those two those two uh, points there. It's, uh, it's no biggie, it's no issue, but now I know what to expect. So I'll take that power away. Um, so confirm that the flight controller is 
at least got electricity going through it and uh, the ESC didn't blow up in my face I'll plug that into better flight just to make sure that it, it reads it and um, I'll be back in a minute we'll move on to the next step Right, back from better flight and we found a flight controller so I'm happy to move forward. Uh, one thing I did notice is that if you look at the configuration that this guy is loaded with, it tells you in the configuration that the receiver is on UART5 from the factory. However, if you look at the instructions online to accompany this flight controller, you'll find out they'll tell you to connect it to UART3. Um, I'm sure everybody's going to work that out and you're not going to damage anything by getting it wrong, but I guess it's just a point that even sometimes with the same manufacturer you can't find common sense. So you really just got to keep your wits about you, look at what you're doing, maybe you don't always trust what you read and just do your own research I think sometimes can help. Uh, okay, I'm going to uh, bridge these two here. For the VTX, I've confirmed that I need to run it above 7 volts and uh, under 26 volts so I'm going to like to bridge the gap on this side here which will give me VBAT. In the case of 6S batteries, that's going to be about 25 volts. And the camera, I have confirmed, will run on 4.6 volts to less than VBAT. I can't remember what it was. So I'm going to make that run on 5 volts by bridging these two here. So I'll get that done, and um, we'll be back. Righto, so I tacked on a little bit of solder onto those two bridges, and uh, we've got the right voltage now apparently coming out of the VTX and where the camera is. Uh, one thing worth sharing because this is as much a how-to video as, um, as lessons that I've learned in learning. So I've just gone to open up the camera and I did put it back together but straight out of the box I'm using this little foxy guy and hopefully this camera will focus on that We've got here in the packaging, let me just see if you can see that. Hopefully you can read that. On the packaging there, it says voltage input. And it's got DC 4.6 to 20 volts. So based on that, I elected not to use VBAT because my VBAT is 6 times 4.2, which is 25. And I didn't want to blow the arse out of my camera. However, as soon as you take it out of the box, you're then faced with, hopefully you can see that, the back of the camera, and it gives the instructions to use the voltage as VCC. So um, that's really confusing, just like everything else in this fucking hobby. These manufacturers are cunts. Uh, on one hand, they're telling you you can use 20 volts. On the other hand, they're saying VCC, which in quadcopters now, I think 6S, 25 volts is pretty standard. So... Um, these guys need to get the shit together. I've already elected to run it on 5 volts. Um, hopefully there won't be any issues in that. So uh, Anyway, I'll finish getting this guy together. I'm just test fitting things. And I'll come back once that's all done. And I'll uh, have a bigger yarn then.